You are watching Forbidden Knowledge TV. Newly released data from a European satellite has revealed the tectonic underworld below the frozen southernmost continent. Researchers have created incredible 3D maps of Antarctica's tectonic underworld and found that the ice has been concealing the remains of an ancient supercontinent's spectacular destruction. It's well known to scientists that the exact geological makeup of Antarctica's innermost land, located in East Antarctica, is yet to be discovered. What else awaits discovery in this mysterious continent? Antarctica today is divided into three distinct regions – East Antarctica, West Antarctica and the Antarctic Peninsula, with each area containing a different topography beneath. The ice of the Antarctic Peninsula, for example, conceals a spine of mountains projecting northwest from the inside of the continent. East Antarctica, the largest area, includes flat plains as well as mountains. The Gambertsev mountain range is located here. Its mountains extend for 750 miles, with peaks rising above 11,200 feet, roughly the same height as the European Alps. This range is completely covered by over 2,000 feet of ice. The ground in West Antarctica is almost completely below sea level. The ocean bowl beneath this section was created during the last ice age, when the weight of the ice, which was considerably thicker at the time, pushed down on the bedrock. But what else lies beneath the ice on this enigmatic continent? In November 2018, news outlets around the world reported that incredible data about Antarctica had been obtained from a defunct European satellite. Launched on March 17, 2009, the Gravity Field and Steady State Ocean Circulation Explorer the GOCE, was the first satellite of the Living Planet Program, which is the European Space Agency's Earth Science Program. It orbited Earth between March 2009 and November 2013, and its task was to measure the pull of the Earth's gravity more precisely than any mission before. Using data from that satellite, the researchers from Kiel University in Germany and the British Antarctic Survey examined Antarctica under the ice. Analysis revealed rocky zones known as cratons in the Earth's lithosphere, a zone between the planet's crust and mantle. Cratons are the core regions of most tectonic plates. The team also found Oregons, which are folded up regions of plates that are the precursors to mountain ranges. It's by studying the number of cratons and origins that scientists are able to compare the continental plates beneath Antarctica with other regions around the world. GOCE's newly discovered cratons are believed by scientists to represent the remains of ancient continents, and they reveal important information about how Earth's modern-day continents are structured, especially Antarctica. But data from the decommissioned satellite not only produced a global gravity map, but also revealed local gravity changes with a resolution as small as around 50 miles. Co-author of the study, Fausto Ferricacoli, science leader of geology and geophysics at the British Antarctic Survey said, these gravity images are revolutionizing our ability to study the least understood continent on Earth, Antarctica. In East Antarctica, we see an exciting mosaic of geological features that reveal fundamental similarities and differences between the crust beneath Antarctica and other continents it was joined to until 160 million years ago. One interesting piece of information the team found was that East Antarctica is made up of old Cratons and younger Oregons. The researchers found similar structures to this in Australia and India. However, West Antarctica has a thinner and more homogeneous crust, which more closely resembles the southern tip of South America. The gravity map the team assembled from the data reveals that East Antarctica is made up of multiple Cratons, which are the cores of long-lost continents. The scientists use data from other satellites to essentially strip Antarctica of its vast layers of ice so that they were able to focus on the bedrock beneath. When they examined this layer, the team found evidence of the continent's history as part of Gondwana, 
a supercontinent made of the modern Southern Hemisphere continents. The matching shapes of the coastlines of Western Africa and Eastern South America were first officially noted by Francis Bacon in 1620, at a time when Africa and the New World first became available to study. But the idea that not all the continents of the Southern Hemisphere were once joined in one great supercontinent was not put forward in detail until hundreds of years later. In 1912, by German meteorologist and pioneer of polar research Alfred Wegener, he is remembered today as the originator of continental drift theory, which he put forward in 1912, suggesting that the continents are slowly drifting around the Earth. But Wegener also convinced that all of the Earth's continents were once part of a single great landmass, which he called Pangaea. Its name is derived from the Greek Pangaea, meaning all the Earth. Wegener proposed that Pangaea existed about 240 million years ago but by about 200 million years ago, it began breaking up. Over millions of years, Pangaea eventually separated into pieces that gradually moved away from one another. These pieces slowly formed the continents we recognize today. Nowadays, scientists believe that several supercontinents like Pangaea have formed and broken up over the course of the Earth's history. These include Panotia, which formed about 600 million years ago, and Rodinia, a supercontinent that assembled around 1 billion years ago and broke up 750 to 633 million years ago. In terms of Wegener's Pangaea, Gondwana comprised the southern half of this supercontinent. According to plate tectonic evidence, the supercontinent of Gondwana was assembled by continental collisions in the late Precambrian, about 1 billion to 542 million years ago, and broke up around 180 million years ago. It eventually split into the landmass we know as Africa, South America, Australia, Antarctica, the Indian subcontinent, Madagascar, and the Arabian Peninsula. Even though the continent existed many millions of years ago, some paranormal researchers have put forward the idea that Gondwana may have been the original model for the lost continent of Atlantis, with the knowledge of existence somehow being passed down through the ages. Gondwana's formed into its final shape about 500 million years ago. By this time, primitive multicellular organisms had evolved, as revealed by the rare fossils left from this period, which include segmented worms, frond-like organisms and round creatures similar to modern jellyfish. When Gondwana represented Earth's southerly supercontinent, the planet was a lot warmer than today, and crucially, there was no Antarctic ice sheet. <laughs> It was also a time, the Jurassic period, when dinosaurs still roamed the Earth and huge areas of Gondwana were covered with lush rainforest. The first stage of the breakup of the subcontinent began in the early Jurassic period, about 180 million years ago. This new information contained in this gravity map gives scientists more knowledge about how the Antarctic continent was formed. But perhaps, just as importantly, it tells scientists what will happen to it in the future. Antarctica is melting at a fairly rapid rate, and being aware of its underlying structure can tell us how this will happen and perhaps how it will eventually recover. In December 2019, it was revealed that a new map of the mountains, valleys and canyons concealed beneath Antarctica's ice had revealed the deepest land on Earth and would help predict future ice loss. The new NASA map, called Bed Machine Antarctica, collects together ice movement measurements, seismic measurements, radar and other data points to assemble what is hoped to be the most detailed picture ever of Antarctica's hidden features. According to NASA's website, Bed Machine is a new Antarctic bed topography product based on ice thickness data from 19 different research institutes dating back to 1967, encompassing nearly a million line miles of radar soundings. Bed Machine relies on the fundamental physics-based method of mass conservation to estimate what lies beneath the radar sounding lines, utilizing highly detailed information on ice flow motion from satellite data that dictates how ice moves. 
Originally, NASA's bed map was the result of work led by the British Antarctic Survey, where researchers assembled decades' worth of geophysical measurements. In operation from 2013, Bedmap 2, like the original Bedmap, was a collection of three datasets – surface elevation, ice thickness, and bedrock topography. One important discovery made by Bed Machine Antarctica was of previously unknown topographical features, such as the broad ridges that shield the glaciers flowing across the Transarctic Mountains, which separate East and West Antarctica. Bed Machine also discovered the world's deepest land canyon below Denman Glacier in East Antarctica, an astonishing 11,000 feet below sea level. As a comparison, the lowest exposed region of land on the Earth is the Dead Sea, which sits a mere 1,419 feet below sea level. The new NASA map is a vital resource that will help scientists predict exactly which areas of Antarctica are at highest risk of sliding into the ocean in the next few decades or even centuries, and which parts might in fact be more stable than previously thought. Who knows what else such Antarctica mapping projects might turn up in the future. You are watching Forbidden Knowledge TV.